Hey everybody, it's Valkyrian, and today we're going to be checking out Hori's new grip controller fit for the Nintendo Switch. Previously, Hori released the Split Pad Pro earlier in the Switch uh, lifeline. Today, they finally released a second generation of these called the Grip Controller Fit, is what it says in Japanese, and I guess the English name will be the Split Controller Fit is what I believe is what the difference will be. But as you can see, one of the major differences this time around is that the controller will be a little bit thinner, it'll be a little more uh, uh, more in the mid-range instead of the larger controller that the previous one is. And you can still get the previous controller, it's still very popular, a lot of people recommend it. But I've been in the, in the market for a new controller, I've been playing my Switch quite a lot recently this year, and these default Joy-Cons are a nightmare for someone with me with big gangly hands, so I'm very much was in the market for a new controller, a new way to control it. I also use a normal, uh, kind of standard style controller, also by Hori, whenever I play the Switch in the dock. But recently, like I've said, I've been playing it a lot handheld mode, so I've been looking for something to replace the Joy-Cons with. But anyway, there are some warnings on the label, or, or on the box, I should say. Um, so, first and foremost, uh, this controller is not wireless. It is not, it is not going to have gyro controls either. So, so whenever you dock into the Switch, that is the only way that you can use this. You can't use the, the, the control unit that was included with the Switch that lets you put the Joy-Cons on either side. You can't do that. Uh, there are no gyro controls, meaning you can't gyro control, uh, Splatoon, for example, Splatoon 3. There are also some other warnings that tell you that you can't use the NFC stuff, which is the Amiibos, I believe. I don't use Amiibos. Uh, you can't use the IR camera. All that extra functionality, like HD rumble and whatnot, is also disabled with this control style. But anyway, that's enough of that. Uh, there are some other warnings, but it's just basically basically all the little extra things that the base Joy-Cons can do, you can't do with this controller. But one thing you can do is you can't. it does have a mappable button for both Joy-Cons on the back, and it also has rapid fire. Read it. But anyway, let's open this bad boy up. <clears throat> Thankfully, there's no glue or tape, I should say. Also, this thing is very light. I was very surprised when I actually found this and I picked it up. Like, wow, this is extremely light. <laughs> okay, so we have our controllers. We also have our instructions. Oh, those are upside down. Yeah, it tells you how to pair. Some of the stuff that you can do. I'm mostly curious to see how this feels because it's obviously bigger than a standard Joy-Con, but it's not quite as big as the Split Bad Pro, which is kind of the reason I bought this instead. I didn't really want the the uh, Split Pad Pro because it was just kind of too big and too unwieldy, in my opinion, is just by looking at it. So I passed on it. But get the switch already here. But yeah, let's let's pop these bad boys out. Yeah. So it's quite significant. It's not quite as big as the Split Pad Pro, at least just by looks, but I think it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Like, it doesn't have some of the extra length at the bottom, which kind of, which might have been nice, but I think I'll be able to make do, because I don't play a lot of, like, crazy, crazy games, mostly uh, RPGs and whatnot, so. But yeah, they, they, they feel good. They have nice clickiness to them. The buttons are definitely bigger, and the the, uh, the analog stick is more concave this time instead of the other way with this. You have an actual D-pad now, which is great. Uh, the buttons feel good. They feel good. I feel like, yeah, they're bigger and they're just like more significant. They just feel better. And it's the same with the other one. Like, they're only a few uh, millimeters bigger, but I feel like it makes a difference. So let's pop these in and see what kind of difference it makes. And oh yeah, and of course we should show the back. We have this button, and it's not too big of a button, but yeah, it's a pretty significant one. So let's see what we can do. We might need to 
repair this. I'm not sure. Oh, no, I think we're good. So I started up Pokin just to try this. I don't actually play Pokin very often, but I actually haven't played it at all, but I, I wanted to try it. So I will try to control this while also I have a, ca a camera in my face, but let's see here. Yeah, the controls feel, feels better, it feels better. Actually, don't know the controls of Pokémon. <laughs> yeah, I'm not an expert at Pokémon. I don't know how to play this game very well. Also, this these controllers obviously should work for the Switch OLED or the OE Switch. I guess what it's called here in Japan. Uh, I just have the standard OG Switch. I haven't seen a reason to upgrade, so I I never have. But yeah, so far the controller feels good. I it it adds a bit of significance to it, but not not too much. Like yeah, I'm trying to line this up so as you can see, it's only just ever so much more, but I feel like it adds a lot to it, and it feels a lot better. It feels a lot better to hold the switch. Like I don't know if you can see this, but uh, yeah, you can kind of get this grip in the back a lot better than with <laughs> than with the uh, other one so but yeah the controller feels good I'm gonna enjoy messing around with this I'm gonna I'm just gonna I'm trying to do this through <laughs> through the through the camera and it's not very easy so oh my gosh yeah I can definitely dash easier and whatnot so that's good so, as you can see, you can even still run around even in, like, a mostly gyro game like, uh, Let's Go. So, let's see how combat works in this. So, yeah, as you can see, gyro controls do not work in this situation. You can't. You can only have use the stick. So, that'll get... Take some getting used to if you play a lot of gyro games, especially something like Splatoon and whatnot. Um, but yeah, it's 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 it is what it is. It, it's a compromise, definitely. And for fifty dollars, I think I think something like gyro and HD Rumble and whatnot. I feel like they should be included, but uh, even though they're not, uh, it, it depends on what you're craving for extra controller comfort and functionality is in general i do think this control setup is a lot better i think it's a lot more comfortable for me personally i like the extra width i like the extra uh the feeling of the buttons and the control sticks is just a lot better i do think these extra little buttons down at the bottom do feel a bit cheap but other than that, I feel like the extra significance of this controller adds a lot, and I do think it's worth it if you're in the you're in the department or in the in the search for a new control uh, new controller for your Switch. So I do think it's good. I think I like the fact that it's not quite as big as the Split Pad Pro, but it's a little bit. It's obviously more significant than the Nintendo Switch normal Joy-Con, so I personally like that. I think it's worth it. I'm so far. I've only just now messed around with it. I will continue to mess around with it and answer any questions you have about this controller. I hope <laughs> if I don't break it. Um, and I will try to mess around with the extra button functionality in the back. I don't think I actually need it, but the reason I got this this color it comes in four different colors. There is the light gray and yellow there is the light gray and mint green which i thought i would get but i didn't really like the green color and i don't really like the yellow color either there's also midnight blue and i believe it's wine red or like mid crimson red or something like that it's like a wine red but the wine red and blue and the midnight blue controllers are all one color so there's no uh, color difference between like here in the unit uh, it's just 
straight blue. The buttons are the same blue or red, and it's all red. I think that looks really cheap, so so I didn't want to get that, and so I just kind of chose the yellow one. It's like, yeah, why not? I don't have anything yellow, really, so I might as well get a controller that's yellow, but my original idea was to get the, the Pokemon edition, the ones that are coming out uh, in about two weeks now, I believe September 29th is when they launch here in Japan. It'll be a Pikachu one and a Gengar one, and they have special art, and I don't really like Pikachu or Gengar, really, but I was leaning for the Gengar one. It's like, oh, this looks nice. And then I saw that it was $15, or the equivalent of $15, it's like, and I was like, well, I don't actually like these two Pokemon, so <laughs> there's no reason to spend that extra money, so I just went for the base one because it was available. It came out the day before I went to the store, so I was like, yeah, I'll just buy it. It's fine. Anyway. So I did want to add a small addendum to the video here with some pictures instead of recording another part of the video because I'm lazy. Um, so first and foremost, I just wanted to say that yes, you can dock your Switch with these two controllers on the unit. It does fit into the charging dock or the display dock, whatever it's called. It fits fine. The two controllers don't uh, get in the way or stop it from charging. If, you, if you're like me, you just put it back on the dock when it's not in use. And of course, the last thing is, because this is a different form factor, official Nintendo Switch carrying cases most likely won't fit. I have a pretty standard uh, Nintendo carrying case for my Switch. I got it when I got the Switch. It, it's made just for the standard Joy-Cons. With these new extra grip controller fits, of course it doesn't fit into the carrying case. So... I do believe Horty is releasing or has released a new set of carrying cases to go along with this new control controller set. So that is something to consider. But other than that, I think the form factor and just using it after about two days now has been really good. It's really comfortable to play like more action heavy games. It's pretty comfortable to play like RPGs, just like lay down in bed. I'm having no problems. I'm enjoying it. I'm I'm digging it. But I will say I think the loss of various functions and obviously the different size, so you might need a new case. It does make this a bit of something you really have to think about and decide if the loss of functionality, having to possibly get a new carrying case is that worth it? Is the loss of I don't know, amiibo support something that you want to deal with? Do you use amiibos a lot? I don't use amiibos at all. I don't care about wireless at all, so it works for me. But, of course, it is something to consider. So, with that in mind, if you have any questions, let me know down below. I can answer them, hopefully. Uh, are you planning to pick this thing up? Are you interested in it? Are you just going to stick with the normal split, split Pad Pro? Jeez, that is a tongue twister. Either way, leave a comment if you're curious about anything or if you want me to answer something. Like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Ring the bell, I guess. I don't know. Thanks for the support. That's what I want to say. Screw all the other stuff. Thanks you for your support.